Welcome to Telmora, the northernmost Telvani tower in Azura's coast, home of the supposedly misandric wizardess Drotha. We are Quenf Ibn Light, a mercenary sorcerer. We'll take a look at several mods today, the old Tamriel rebuilt work as well as a number of smaller projects, but the star of the show is Of Ash and Blight by Melchior Dark. OAB is very different from the mods I covered previously because instead of adding new land masses, it expands the old Morrowind content, elaborating on the Dunmer culture and economy in a way that is respectful to the original game. Bother someone else. OAB enhances Telmora in a number of ways, the most obvious being the inclusion of this sophisticated vertical garden that is supposed to be a primary economic engine for the settlement. Characters skilled in alchemy can make good use of it. I want nothing to do with you, Breton. I'm sorry, what? Do we all really look the same? I have no time for you, Nord. Now that's better. Navigating the Telvani Sadrith Towers is all about being able to cast levitation. You'll get more than you bargain for from me. And endure verbal threats. Notice that while the guards in the port were male, all Mistress Drothed retainers in the tower, the place that actually matters, are female. We're being denied spell merchant services on account of us being a moid. The Covenant is the name of the inn. A cozy enough place, this is where you'll be staying in Telmora. Outside there is this man. Not moving, not blinking, not talking, not reacting to our presence in any way. He can talk, actually. Deal Enerich is a traveling merchant. He heard the local wizard lord is hostile to males, but didn't pay much attention to the rumor, and that's how he got himself cursed by Drotha. And it's a designer curse, too. Can't easily dispel it. Kirsty, a local woman, brings him food every day. She calls the merchant a man-elf. Attempting to persuade Drotha is meaningless. She says, instead we should go to the nearby settlement of Vos and see Lord Arion, a much milder ruler, maybe he can help. I wonder if Kirsty cleans him up. The smell must be horrible. Drotha is surrounded by her female Praetorian guard wizards. And yes, she is not helpful. At least we didn't get cursed. These are her private chambers. Surprisingly ascetic. Kind of makes me like her a little bit. And there is this painting of a mushroom tower. See these buildings over there? That's Voss. And this thing is Telvos, home of Master Arion and our next destination. Telmora and Voss are located so close to one another, you can literally throw a rock from the top of Telmora Tower and hit someone in Voss. In fact, we might do that later. If you don't want to get your shoes wet, you can pay for a boat service, but we'll just walk. What do you want? I want to know if you can see anything from under that hat. Looks like a beekeeper's hat. An OAB addition. I wonder what this guy's occupation is. Another OAB addition are these... Terrace farms, I believe they're called? Voss is supposed to be a farming village. The vanilla version had farmer residents, but no farms for them to work on. The mod fixes that. Are you sure you want to do this guy? This region of the mainland is called the Grazelands, or Sunaguradan. Pastoral, isn't it? The version of the Grazelands we are experiencing is being affected by two mods, OAB being one, and Leowin's Days of Fire being another. Actually, no, it's not. I failed to install Leowin's mod correctly and spent ten or so hours recording the footage that turned out to be mostly just vanilla Morrowind. This is how Days of Fire actually looks like. Again, this is vanilla, and this is Days of Fire. I'll have to showcase it some other day. Voss is a tiny Velothi-style settlement. The original developers of Morrowind seem to have forgotten about Voss. The only reason to ever go here is the local tribunal temple, one of the very few in this part of the world. And here are the Dunmer living gods. Hmm, that art reminds me of something. We'll be staying in the Voss trade house. The hanging leaflets are bounties and job offers. The original Voss had only one or two quests associated with it. The mod adds a lot more. Rogue Ashlanders wanted for raiding the settlement and attacking a guard. Hmm, pretty sure these were the guys. Varro, the owner. Scum. We rent a room for the night, only to be rudely awakened by a giant rat. This place has sanitation problems. 
Varro agrees. That's what dogs and cats are for, he says. But the dark elves don't have either. In fact, in Morrowind, it's the rats that are domesticated. The Dunmer culture never ceases to amaze me. A Khajiit rat catcher is the solution, but the imperial laws prevent Varro from owning slaves. Indentured servants, on the other hand, it's time we visit Tel Vos. Master Arian's tower is certainly one of a kind. An imperial-style fort penetrated and intertwined with Talvani mushroom technology. The place is full of secret rooms and tunnels, a bunch of pillows, an empty bottle and a stamina-regenerating magical amulet. I wonder what this room is for. Other hidden rooms contain treasure and Daedra. The elf in charge of Telvos prison says Master Arion is not very interested in keeping slaves around, prefers mercenaries. Yeah, whatever. Can you please move out of the way, guy? Integration of Imperial and Telvani architecture is not proceeding smoothly. This Khajiit was a construction worker from the time before the tower got Telvanized. The cat was enslaved after someone discovered he was hoarding Dwemer artifacts. Collapsed pathways, unfinished construction. Over there, that's new. What's going on beneath Tel Vos? Sweet moon sugar. Indentured servitude is obviously not freedom, but it's not as bad as slavery. That's the best we can do for now. Oh hey, um, I meant to ask you something. Is that true what they say in the real Berenziah books about Khajiit dicks? Varro is grateful. We receive no monetary compensation since we did barely anything, but he provides us with a lifetime supply of scuttle. Seems that Dunmer found a way to turn anything that moves into food, he says. But this stuff is actually good. I think scuttle is supposed to be like cheese, but made out of beetles. Back to Telvos. Daedroth Vyassa is just chilling here among the retainers. In the next room there is a throne. I take it this is where it sleeps or rests? I guess the Daedra don't need to sleep. Are you here to challenge me? Ha! I don't think so. <laughs> There are many strange things in Tel Vos, like this um, Imperial Museum, a collection of Legion weapons and armor, silverware plates, candles. What is that sound? Look, they even have a living Imperial Guard on display. Lord Arion is very cultured. I see yet another ill-mannered tourist is free to roam the streets. This is the Morrowind version of Dwemer armor. The helmet looks interesting, but overall I like the Skyrim design a little better. Another secret room, but there is nothing of note inside, it's just for storage. Be gone. An Argonian mercenary. Master Arion is not bigoted. This guy's armor costs as much as the services of a small army of fighters guild idiots. This is what is making these annoying sounds. A reconstructed steam centurion. We are in the Dwemer museum. Museum of Talvos. Armor, weapons, schematics and plans, including rare Dwemer airship plans. The finished version looks like this. Did you know that there are also Sload airships? Most Talvani structures require levitation in order to navigate them, but Talvos is something else. In order to reach the highest point of the tower, I had to cast my levitation spell three times. Interesting outfit. You might get caught dead in it. What? What's wrong with my outfit? I thought I was being a stylish mercenary wizard type. The view of the Graceland's from the top of Tel Vos. Alright, let's go see Master Arion. Take your drunken war stories elsewhere. The Imperial Christ. Man, Turedus Talanian, is a ranking retainer who manages the day-to-day -day operations of the tower. Arion has quite a collection of expensive alcohols. His bedroom, very Spartan. Unlike the Hlalu, the wizard lords are not fond of displays of wealth in public or in private. Arion is doing research into Angusta Kvatakvakis. He actually agreed to help. The man Dreth accursed is a trader, and Arion wants to attract economic activity both to the tower and to the village. Perhaps we can persuade the Breton to move to Varros. 
Using a slowfall spell, we navigate to the services tower. I am certain you have something very special to say. Just do so elsewhere. After the ceremonial and pleasantries, the alchemist sells us a potion of cure paralysis. Arion enhances it so that the potion can cure Dratha's designer curse. I like that all three communities, Vos, Telvos, and Telmora, are in such close proximity to one another. They almost feel like different districts of a city. We cure the Breton and convince him to move to the trade house. And indeed, here he is. What's this then? Cured with dialogue barks and all. The wizard lord pays us for the services rendered. He also gives us this skill book about Raman the Third. Huh. Look. What did Master Arion mean by this? Among other things, our stay in Telvos taught us two important lessons. First, our life would be much easier if we joined the Great House Telvani. And second, this is no fighter's guild. We should stop dressing like a mercenary bum. I know exactly what to do. We need to briefly visit our alma mater, Old Ebonheart. Well, hello there. Pleasure to meet you. Everyone is so nice here. I suppose we should go through customs. Do we have greater than or equal to three standard segments of ebony in our possession? No. Do we carry Dwemer artifacts with an estimated market value greater than or equal to 2,000 septums? No. Do we possess substances known as moon sugar or skooma? Unfortunately, no. Uh, let's see what's in the papers. Series of break-ins to Imperial institutions? Imperial treasures stolen? We spend the night in the Mages Guild and then get a meal in the Port Inn, surrounded by shady people and obvious criminals, just like the old times. Not sure what's up with his facial expression. I need to find a suit of armor that's in this style, but less mundane looking. This is better. Western aesthetic, but kind of uninspired though. Firos Matimos is the Duke of Deshaun. He is supposed to be in charge of dress slavers. Things must not be going well if he is hiding here in Ibn Tower. A house dress ceremonial garb on the shelf next to him. What, Outlander? Why do you disturb me? We met Eris Mandrethi before, one of King Helseth's royal guard. I like what I'm seeing. Helseth spent much of his life in Wayrest, a region in High Rock. This armor style has very obvious Breton influences. Like most of the royal guard, Arius is a deadly fighter. But being a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat, we are extremely proficient at taking out even the most dangerous targets one-on-one. -on -one. This was a legal duel. The guard won't do or say anything. Yeah, I'll be taking that. I hope Helseth isn't one to hold the grudge. Our new look. I love it. A mix of High Rock, Dunmer, and Daedric pieces. Expensive and rare. We used to refer to ourselves as a mercenary, but from now on this will change. Welcome to Telmora, the northernmost Telvani tower in Azura's coast. We are Quenf Ibn Light, a sorcerer and a wandering knight about to offer our services to the Great House Telvani. This can be achieved by one of two ways. We can either go to Sadrith Mora, the district seat, essentially a provincial capital of the house in Vardenfell, or we can travel to Port Telvanis, the largest Telvani city and one of the largest cities in the game. But getting there is quite a journey. A guild guide brings us to Bosmora, a wealthy Endorial settlement. For some reason, this sentence feels strange to say out loud. But there are wealthy Endorial towns, it's not that weird. Bosmora looks like a fun place, but we won't be staying long. The Silt Strider takes us to the temple city of Necrom. Be afraid. For the dead are watchful. One of the ships in the port travels to Lothanis, a Telvani trade settlement built almost entirely over water. These are the sounds of a river strider, aquatic arthropods bred by the Telvani to act as boats. Silt striders are all terrain, while these things are like Telvani navy. The specialists operating river striders are called therionauts. 
This is how we get to Port Telvanis, our destination, the most northeast city in all of Tamriel. In order to trade or make use of any of the services, we are required to purchase hospitality papers. Quickly, Outlander. I haven't much time. Look at this strange hat. What is this? Goblin style? The Avenue is the name of the underground inn. An old mermage gives us an insight into the local culture. Port Telvanis is far out of the reach of the Hand of the Septims, he says. Life here goes almost unaware of the Empire. No major Imperial force has entered the bounds of the city for centuries. Well, we're here now. This combination of a cave tile set, Telvani mushrooms, crystals, waterfalls, wooden furniture and lanterns. I love this place. I spend the night in the avenue. We are exploring some of the oldest content in Tamriel Rebuild. Port Telvanis is kind of a multi-layered settlement. A relatively small amount of buildings are accessible from the ground level, but fortunately the Telvani Council House is one of them. The wizard lords are notoriously eccentric and self-absorbed. The work of managing day-to-day -day affairs is delegated to an uplifted retainer called a mouth. A mouth speaks for his lord, thus the name. They congregate in council houses like this one, and there is another on the main mainland in Sadrith Mora. Mouths give out jobs to lesser retainers like us. We are officially a Telvani. Here are the rules. If you steal from another Telvani but still live, you deserve whatever you got. Murder by magic or treachery is a traditional way of settling disputes. Huh. I didn't realize we were Telvani this entire time. More importantly, if you join a great house, it's impossible to join another, even if you are expelled. And this is fine. The only other great house I might have considered joining is somewhat cosmopolitan great house Hlalu. But we have quite a few Hlalu bodies on us, so Telvani it is. The first jobs are simple and don't take advantage of our specialized skills. Take this dispatch to Mistress Eldali in Gasa. Sadrith, a mushroom town just south of Port Telvanis. At this stage, we're a hireling, not a trusted member, basically just a merc. This is Mistress Eldali's tower. There are quite a few Altmer here. We are being refused services because of the insufficient rank. A mud golem construct. Haven't seen one of these before. You're trying my patience, Nord. I should have guessed. Eldali is an Altmer. What's that behind her? A Sadri throne? She takes the dispatch and tells us to return in one hour. I have the finest spells in town. I hope this is not the only thing you can talk about. It is impressive that an Altmer managed to become a Telvani wizard lord. We made a right career move. According to this book, the informal name of the mainland wizard lords is the Parliament of Bugs. An hour or so later, Eldali gives us another dispatch to take back to the mouth in Port Telvanis, a house dress slaver delegation. What the hell is that thing? Looks like one of them bugs from the Redguard comic. The slaves appear to be segregated by race. This branch has humans. This one is for Khajiit. Notice they all wear pants. And the last one has the single Argonian the dress have for sale. Is this because the lizards are popular with buyers or do they just have a shortage of Argonians? One of the mouths wants us to deliver another letter. We are going back to Lothanis to talk to Bel Gernok. Strangely, the letter we're carrying appears to be blank. Lothanis is a prosperous settlement. The influence of the local lord increased quite a bit in recent times. Bel Gernok is not on the council though, and this frustrates him. A lot of Khajiit slaves in the tower. Actually, it's not a tower, it's a manor. Built horizontally into a side of a hill. Not very wizard lord lake. We pass the blank letter to Belgarnok. As soon as he reads it, a Dremora is summoned. Do not meddle in the affairs of the Parliament of Bugs. You have been warned, it says in a booming voice. Telvani schemes and intrigues. Gernak overreached, trying to leverage the relative prosperity of his settlement for a place on the council. Nobody's dicks that long. Not even Long Dick Johnson and he had a fucking long dick. Thus the name. I suppose we'll explore on foot for a little bit. 
The region between the Telvanni Isles, the Graceslands, and the Mephalan Vales to the south is called Boethia's Spine. What is this place? Looks like a Velothi settlement. Welcome to Rayon Run, a small Tel Othi village with an ebony mine. We spend the night at the Dancing Jug, the inn. There's someone watching me. I can tell. What, is it cool to wear reddish-brown? The place does have a proper wizard tower and a silt strider service. And that is how we get to Helnim. Like many towns we've explored today, Helnim is actually several culturally and socioeconomically distinct communities pressed together. The Imperials, the Wizard Lord and crew, and the poor who live in the segregated slums district. It's a poor town. Although the locals would complain that its importance as a trading hub has greatly diminished in the recent years. The Imperial Archaeological Society has an office here. This branch is not quite as developed as one in Old Ebenhard. Tons of academics, but no museum. This is a lecture hall. While we are in Helnim, we should introduce ourselves to the local wizard lord. I've heard stories. Narusa Darithi, the mad lord of Helnim, used to be on the council, but then was removed because, you know, he's insane. That's the name. Darithi was replaced by Eldali the Altmer. Belgirnak assumed the position would be his. But no, Darithi isn't the first in St. Dunmer to believe that Quama eggs have some sort of special significance. Not sure what's up with that. Who let you in here? Get out! Just respecting your authority in Helnim. This is not the last time we're visiting this place, but for now, let's explore Boethia's spine some more. We are being attacked by a strange group of bandits in civilian clothing using cooking appliances as weapons. I wonder if there is a story behind them. Runaway slaves, maybe? Some of them have slaves' bracers. <coughs> Here is another strange slave encounter. A naked Argonian bandit with a spear attacked us while we were crossing the river. His name was Swims Deep, cause he is a good swimmer. Boethia's Spine and the Telvanni Isles must be the two of the foggiest regions of Morrowind, which limits the sightseeing we can do. We'll stay in the water's shadow tavern in Lothanis. Perhaps the weather will improve tomorrow. <laughs> But it's always raining in Port Telvanis. Some of the developers involved in the Tamriel Rebuild project consider their older work to be inferior to the later releases like Anthrin or Old Ebonheart. But is it really true? Well, yes and no. The design of exteriors is definitely more bland compared to Anthrin or OAB, but at the same time they're about on par with the original Morrowind, and the quests and interiors are very good. Nice selection of Telvani helmets at the local trader. The enchanter denies us services due to insufficient rank, but maybe we can change that. The mouth is pleased that we pass the message to Balgernak. This enables our promotion from a mere hireling to a full retainer. I discover that the council building in Port Telvanis has a huge underground sublevel, the Vault. What is that, a Sadrith Nerve Cluster? We descend into the caverns, until eventually we reach the Vault Door. <laughs> <clears throat> Such as the Telvani Way. Inside, the vault is guarded by a wizard and their pet Daedra. There are um, some interesting things in here, but overall, the vault is kind of unimpressive. Real talk, I've seen storefronts in old Ebonhard that had more expensive stuff on display than whatever this is. Stones and minerals? Now that we're dressed up nicely and are a member of the house, there should be more opportunities for us in Talvos. What's up, Varro? Where is my scuttle? Keep moving, scum. And hello to you too, Hyran. Speak freely, friend. Toretus sends us on a trade mission. Master Arion believes the local Ashlanders would be more agreeable if they shared mutual economic interests with Talvos. We need to go talk to them, find out what the tribe needs, field work. Ashlanders are Dunmer nomads that live in the wilderness. Ashlander customs and culture are very different from House Dunmer. They can be hard to deal with. To the north of Tel Vos, there is a camp belonging to the Ahimusa tribe, who have a reputation for being reasonable with outsiders. I forgot, what is that thing called? The tribes tend to move around. The locals tell us of the current location of the Zainab camp. Grayslands, southwest. 
Small groups of hostile Ashlander bandits are found all over the region. Unless your character is fresh off the boat new, they shouldn't pose much of a threat. Getting late, but this is the place. I can already tell. I'm not going to like this. The Ashlanders are not enthusiastic about Arian's offer. We are self-sufficient. We don't need anything from you, they say. Once we raise our disposition with this local woman, she shares that the men often get common diseases and blight diseases while hunting. These problems have alchemical solutions, and that's exactly what we do in Talvas. Potions would be valuable trade goods. Toretus is satisfied. And there is another task. The Hlalu vermin send their agent to Zainab. They want exclusive access to Ashlander Ebony. Arian doesn't say? intend to undermine the deal necessarily, but he wants us to make sure that the Ebony trade goes through Voss. Oh, oh come on. Leave me alone. It's a rather simple negotiation. The Zainab are not Pagguar for House Hlalu, says the Ashlander. I see I stand in good company. Toretus is pleasant to for? work with. Good to see an Imperial in such a high-ranking position in the house. Allow me to shake your hand. Master Arion, it's best you learn this from me. There has been an incident with one of your retainers. Ismir's blood, the arrogance of that Imperial. He wasn't satisfied with the Ashlander deal. Probably wanted his own piece of the ebony pie. I do not expect to get away with this consequence free. We'll serve the tower well. First things first, we need to figure out what was the cause of this. Construction workers complaining about terrible working conditions and aggressive bugs. Well, it is Morrowind. Comes with the territory. Beneath Telvas, among the Sadrith roots, there is a river of lava. Parts of the cave are very beautiful. We use this opening to travel even deeper underground. Doesn't look like it, but this is actually an egg mine contaminated by blight disease. Well, explains the hostile bugs. It's not a portal, by the way. It's a membrane door. Looks magical, but it isn't. At some point, this was a functional mine operated by egg miners. Here are their remains. Hopefully, killing the blighted queen will stop the disease from spreading. The entrance to the mine is just outside the tower. It's an embarrassment that the situation wasn't resolved sooner. Master Arian's attempt to hybridize the two styles didn't exactly work without a hitch, but that should be obvious by now. Tell Voss Laboratory. I'm curious. A small room with a number of tools used in Daedra summoning rituals. But I mean, we are not in Dragonstar anymore, Dorothy. It would be weird if Telvas didn't have a chamber for Daedra summoning. What do you think this crystal is for? A secret passage in one of the towers leads us to a hidden chamber with a Dremora and what looks to be an artifact level Daedric shield. An OAB windmill in Voss. This is how the mechanism looks from the inside. And these are the results of its work. The enchanter in Telvas has a problem with items randomly disappearing despite all the magical precautions she is taking. After snooping around, we find a secret door. And then a secret door inside a secret door. Designing sewer infrastructure for this place must have been a nightmare. And here is the culprit. The scamp was using the tower's network of magical doors and passages to steal items. He would then eat them and shit them out in one of the other rooms. The enchanter no longer wants the items returned to her. The upside-down tower in Telvas can be entered via levitation. Free Cephalophot Helm and some pauldrons inside. You like to walk a fine line, don't you? This is Dagon Fell, a small, predominantly Nordic fishing village located in Shiogorad region, north of the Grayslands. The place should be of special interest to anyone who follows the Skyrim modding scene. Beyond Skyrim Morrowind will likely feature this region in their pre-release. We are here for one specific reason, you a like tiny cottage in the middle of nowhere and its Nord owner. This mod is called Ancient Foes by Dark Elf Guy. I thought we'd check it out since we operate nearby and are of an appropriate level. Ancient Foes is a quest mod, which is a rarest kind of mod for Morrowind. The cottage has a very nice attic. <laughs> The Nord sends us to the nearby ancestral tombs to gather ancient weapons belonging to his clan. 
Two of the tombs are locations from Vanilla Morrowind with pretty much no changes, but the third dungeon is unique. Don't go inside, everyone is dead. That's true, tons of dead people here. Looks like the tomb served as an HQ of a fairly sophisticated smuggler organization. The deeper we descend into the dungeon, the more numerous are the threats, until... Oh god, each one of these skeletons is as tough as a golden saint. The description says it's for level 20 characters. I was 21 and I had to run away. I look like an asshole now because the creatures in the tomb destroyed my armor. This lady is a guard, upholding the imperial law and all. The place has the strangest looking guards. We buy a bunch of tools and fix our wrecked equipment. Eventually, we penetrate deeper into the tomb and recover what seems to be the ultimate prize. A nice looking helmet with a powerful enchantment. It feels deserved too, since the dungeon is extremely tough. One of the hardest in the game. We can keep the helmet or give it back to the Nord for monetary compensation. Seen any elves? <laughs> when you are playing Skyrim, home of the Nords, and the guards there do this joke, it's creepy as hell. Because no, there aren't that many elves actually. I'm not 100% of this, but I'm pretty sure if we do all his tasks, it's possible to get the cottage itself as a reward. And the place is really well designed, but I feel if you're level 20, you probably would have outgrown the simple cottage core lifestyle. Now, if you could get that smuggler's tomb as a player house, that would own. Although I guess nothing is preventing you from using it like that. We're back in Telvas. I was always interested what's in this little tower. Arian's private chamber for meditation and study. See, if this was a Hlalu lord, it'd be all gold bars and stolen Dwemer crap. It wouldn't be Talvos if the tower didn't have at least two secret rooms. I believe this is some kind of a jury-rigged climate control mechanism. With high enough acrobatic skill, it's possible to descend the tower without casting a levitation or a slowfall spell. Voss, tell Voss, tell Mora. Another cool OAB addition are these cave dwellings built into a side of a hill. It's kind of cozy inside. Must be cool to be a cave dweller. Weird to see NPCs using levitation. Looks just as stupid as when the player uses it. And he has a slowfall spell too. This guy thought of everything. We take advantage of the privacy of Arian's study and fill our soul gems with summoned golden saints. With our business in Voss more or less concluded, I take a boat to Helnim. This place is called Mjornir's Alehouse, the kitchen of the Helnim Hall. I take it this is where the local lord eats. Governor Steward directs us to the offices of East Empire Company. It's normal for the company to take advantage of the existing imperial infrastructure to set up its facilities. The EEC is a major center of power not only in Morrowind but on the continent of Tamriel itself. Career-wise, it's a step up from the Fighters Guild, that's for sure. Loros Avius is the factor, meaning he's in that's charge. Him. Our first assignment is to find Mero Galvix, agent of the company, who was supposed to track down a lost shipment of Flynn that disappeared on its way to Tel Mothrivra. But then Galvix himself got disappeared. A mystery to solve. Welcome to Tel Mothrivra, once a stronghold of the Tribunal Temple, now a Telothi abomination. It's beautiful. These two losers are temple ordinators. Cops, basically. They're not allowed inside. This is hilarious. See, the ordinators have some kind of business in Tel Mothrivra. Not sure what it is exactly, I wasn't really paying attention. The problem is that the wizard lord in charge doesn't give a dead Khajiit genitalia about what the temple wants. This is the first time I'm seeing the temple disrespected in such an open and brazen way. It's great. Well, correction, it's the second time. They have summoned undead just standing around, chilling. Very profane. Ceremonial Velothi ash pits used for storage of random crap. Mothrivra used to be a fortress in disrepair. Some years ago, the temple sold it to Lord Omothran here. The first thing they ever did right, he says. The guard informs us that the company man, Mero Galvix, was in town, but then he went somewhere else. We should check the nearby villages. There has never been an Imperial in our village. 
village, says this man. We try our luck in another smallish settlement nearby. A swing? That's cool. A Durin Oaka means shipwreck village in Dunmer language. The local economy is based around looting shipwrecks on the bottom of nearby Lake Boethia. That's the name. We are in the right place. Speak freely, friend. I assist our fellow agent in recovering the lost shipment. This involves trailing one of the suspicious locals at night. Eventually, he leads us to a hidden barrel with lots of flynn, which is kind of like whiskey, but more expensive. This is why the company wants it back. Yes? Our next job is a corruption investigation. There are some interesting discrepancies in the inventory figures. Four bottles of Telvani bug musk have vanished. Of course, losing four bottles is not the end of the world, but there is a concern that this might have been a trial run. Supposedly, two sailors from the Reckless Maiden are involved. I might have failed a speech check. Pretty sure this company clerk is involved as well. The factor is not impressed. Yes, the bottles were recovered, but killing the suspects is not how they do things in the company. It is how we do it in Telvas, though. Our friend Mero is back in town. This secure letter, he says, must reach the hands of the officer in the militia headquarters. The governor must not hear about this. Caden Jorval is the knight protector of Helnim, and he takes his duties seriously. It's one of the city's little political conflicts. There is a class and an ethnic divide, and of course there are the Imperials squabbling amongst themselves. A local scam artist is selling Dwemer artifacts. Upon a closer examination, it turns out he is also manufacturing Dwemer artifacts. Poorly. We ask him to stop, and he does. Factor's response would have been more severe if the artifacts turned out to be real. There is a rumor floating around that the company is struggling to establish a colony on the northern island of Solstheim. Perhaps we can lend a hand there. The place was originally featured in Bethesda's Blood Moon expansion pack for Morrowind, released all the way back in 2003. Believe it or not, despite being a Morrowind nerd for two decades now, I've never actually played Blood Moon. Never properly finished the game with all expansions installed. But of course, I am very familiar with Soul's Time because it was featured again in a DLC for Skyrim. A naked Nord in the wilderness. Well, that's not exactly a rare sight, I do it all the time myself. Actually, let's check out his calves. That's pretty good. Mine are bigger, though. We go back to Master Arian's tower in order to make final preparations for the expedition. First thing we need is to enchant a tool that will help us create even stronger enchantments. Done. It's helpful to have a belt that passively regenerates your health. Enchanted clothing with stamina restoring constant effect will never ever get tired. Also, one point of slowfall to prevent fall damage. Gift of Thur, a Daedri gauntlet we acquired in Anthrin with a permanent upgrade to our hand-to-hand -hand skill. Gift of Voss, a Daedri gauntlet that makes our destruction spells consume less mana. Our armor pieces get minor skill enchantments. And finally, we create Quenf's Ring of Moderate Strength. Even with maxed out skill, I was only able to craft a less powerful version of the item I wanted, but this will do for now. Maybe I'll install a mod to remove this plastic glow. Or maybe not. Hmm. Much of OAB, as well as modern Tamriel Rebuilt and Project Tamriel content, stands out as being of noticeably higher quality compared to vanilla Morrowind. Sometimes playing these mods feels like you're playing Morrowind too. I suppose that makes sense. At this point, the mod authors have been working with the medium of Morrowind for a decade, almost two decades in other cases. Over time, they learned to work it better than the original developers ever did. <laughs> Let's test out our slow fall pants. Well, um, it kind of worked, but we still took damage. The wiki lied to me. But even one point of slow fall does seem to reduce the damage by quite a bit. Also makes the character more controllable while in midair. That's it. We are ready to do the Blood Moon content. For the first time. For the second time. This channel has a Patreon page, link in the description. Your support matters a lot. Next, we'll take a look at a Fallout Stalker crossover RPG. The first Fallout game designed with Temple OS compatibility in mind. See you in two weeks or so.
a land fish. This is it, this is the missing link. It proves that the theory of evolution is true, and the Adra creationism theory is incorrect. Wait, come back! Nobody will believe me! Come back! <laughs>